right, Rabbul Alameen will reward them because he only loves the Muhsinun. Nowhere in the Quran and the Hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he loves the sinner. Nowhere in the Quran or the Hadith you can find this. You have fulfilled the dream, thus we reward the Muhsinun. Verily that indeed was a manifest trial. And we ransomed him with a great with a great sacrifice, a ram, and we, we left for him a, a, a goodly remembrance. How many years since the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died? 1400 years odd. How many years was there Isa before him? Probably 2000 years. Before, Ib before Ibrahim alayhi salam, before Isa was Ibrahim, how many thousands of years was this? Thousands of years, subhanAllah. And we sit in the masjid here as if it is fresh, like yesterday. Verily, we have left this. Verily, we left a goodly remembrance among the later generations. In the middle of the desert, no one is there, no cameras, no microphone and no technology, no Bluetooth, no internet, no BBC, no ABS, no Rolls Royce and no train, no planes. But today this is fresh in their minds as if this was like yesterday. Yuridun aliyutfiyu nur Allah. They want to distinguish the light of Rabbul Alameen. Wallahu mutimmu nuri wa law karihal kafirun. Allah will allow his light to flourish. He will allow his light to illuminate. And his religion is domineering. His religion will take precedence. Because the believers never lose. The believers never ever lose. Muslims and believers are not losers. So long as you remain upon the steadfastness of this religion of Rabbul Alameen. Religion is not choice. Religion is a commandment from Rabbul Alameen. Religion is not for the poor and destitute. Religion is for even the mighty kings and the queens of every part of this dunya. So the religion of Rabbul Alameen will remain. The story of Ibrahim kept us in this masjid now. The story of Ibrahim and the other prophets will keep us going until Yaqeen comes to us. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides that our time is expired, bro. So Ibrahim alayhi salam will live with us until the world end. Likewise, the 25 prophets who are mentioned in the Quran, their stories and their life and their sacrifices and their upbringing and their everything will live with us because we are believers and we are not losers. We are winners. We are not the last winner. We are all winners. Be it the Lahi Azza wa Jal. And we gave him glad tidings of Ishaq. And then the story changes with Ishaq. He was given Ishaq. This ram he was given from heaven. Ibn Abbas says that this ram was grazing in Jannah for 40 years. Four zero. For 40 years this ram is grazing in Jannah. And this child that he was given was the first child. And this is unanimously agreed by the Muslims, the Christians, and the Jews. So Ishmael was his first child from Hagar or Hajar. And then he got Ishaq from Sarah. And then he left them in the middle of the desert he left Ishmael in the middle of the desert in Mecca, where we have the Kaaba. His wife became fearful and she says, Ya Ibrahim, why are you leaving us here? There's no food, there's no provision, there's nothing. Why do you leave us here, Ya Ibrahim? 
She was so fearful that she grabbed her cloak and she was holding on to the cloak as if she's, she's so fearful that she's, she's worried. She's grabbing on with this tension and this worriedness. She's just so sad. And she asked him several times and he says he did not answer. Then she asked him one question. Ya Ibrahim, Allah, Allah, amaraka bihada. Is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has commanded you to leave me and this little boy in this desert? No plantation, no food, no building, nothing. He goes, Naam, yes. <laughs> of course, she says, if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to do this, then he will never leave us. So look at this, he, she's left alone and she doesn't become fearful because she, she heard Rabbul Alameen will not leave them alone. Lessons for the women. Do not panic. Lessons for our sisters. Do not despair and disappear. Lessons for our mothers and our sisters. Even if your husband is your most oppressive geezer on the face of this world, do not panic. So long as your Lord loves you, so long as you do not commit crimes, so long as you protect your private parts, so long as you pray your five prayers, so long as you observe your fasting and you're obedient to your husband, if he makes sense according to the Sharia, then do not panic because your Lord will not leave you alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always protect you. When this king burned the Muslims in this fire in the ditch, in the story of the boy and the king and the sorcerer, every single one became Muslims. Then he burned them in this massive, tremendous fire by one commandment. Burn the Muslims. Kill the Muslims because they're rebels. Kill the Muslims because they believe in Rabbul Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding these people, وَذَٰلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْكَبِيرُ He didn't say these guys are losers who were burnt in this ditch. وَذَٰلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْكَبِيرُ What an amazing success. Our Muslims who suffered in Guantanamo Bay and our Muslims who are in prison cells for no reason, our Muslims who are in every single camp and they haven't done anything, they are winners. <laughs> what an amazing success. So even if you think that you've been suffering in this world, Everything is for a trial, Habibi. Do as much as you can, and Rabbul Alameen will do the rest. Do your best, and Rabbul Alameen will do the rest. Allah's commandments takes precedence. Those are some of the ayat, and the tafsir are really long. 65 pages in Ibn Kathir. And you have many, many hundreds of ayat and hadith regarding the story of Ibrahim. But our time is coming to an end. <coughs> In this little reminder, firstly to myself. Because reminders are first for those who preach. And then to those from among his relatives and friends. And then the reminders for those of the Ikhwan who are our well wishes and those who are from the Jama'ah bi idnillah azza wa jal. Some of the lessons 
that we can learn from the story of Ibrahim is Allah's commandments takes precedence. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever He gives a commandment, it means that you're binding. It's a legal contract between you and Rabbul Alameen. So you have no choice in the matter. You could give it a new name, Halal Mortgage. You can give it a new name, Halal Finance. You can give it a new name, Spiritual Drinks. You can call it Spliff Weed. Because you can't find these words in the Quran. Spliff Weed, Ganja, Cocaine. Yeah? So don't try being clever with me. Anything that makes you pagal, then it's bad for you. Anything that makes you majnoon, stupid, makes you feel like you're walking on water like Isa ibn Maryam walking in the sky. Anything that destroys your akal and, and, and tampers your vision is haram. So Allah's commandments are meant to be honored. Like Ibrahim and his son, Ibrahim, Ishmael could have waited until his dad is sleeping, then he just, he, he does a runner. He just go behind the mountains and hide, just ride a camel and just go away somewhere far. But no, this kid is, look at his dad, he's reasoning. He says, Ya Ibrahim, Ya Ishmael, oh my son, Ya Bunaya, oh little one, you young lad, come here. You know what? And he's reasoning with him. When your kids do something wrong, just don't slap them behind the head. Just don't give them a mighty smack and this man falls to the ground because you're macho, you're the dude, you're the tough one, you big daddy. Huh? You're no big daddy for no one. You're big daddy for yourself. And then when you can live according to Islam, then you're a top daddy. Top lad, as the lads will say. You want to reason out with your kids. Yes, son, you know what? You see that earring you wear on your ear, you look like, like, you look like Khadija. Just reason with the man. And you know the other earring that you wear on is this earring. <laughs> وجب الشكر علينا ما دعا لله دا طلع البدر علينا من ثنيات الودى وجب الشكر علينا 